We're sitting down with newly crowned world champion in the 100 short course meter freestyle, Kyle Chalmers. Uh, you had stated that this is one of two like pretty big goals that you wanted to accomplish in your career before it ended. You did it on home soil, on your turf. How's this feeling right now? Yeah, it's incredible. I think um, I was able to have a whole lot more success this last week than probably I had anticipated or ever imagined. I think obviously the 100 freestyle was incredible and something that, like I said, I dreamed of doing for such a long period of time. And I think for me, the last three World Short Course Championships I've had to pull out due to injury. So 2016, I made the team. Uh, I had to pull out with my heart condition that I was having at that stage, so I wasn't able to go across to Canada. 2018, I pulled out more so because actually um, we had Commonwealth Games, Pan Packs, and then I was going to do ISL that year that didn't go ahead. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'll prioritize ISL, so I couldn't go. And then last year, I had my... My bad shoulder injury and had surgery as World Short Course was kicking off. So for me to finally make it to a World Short Course Championships was incredible. And to stand on top of the podium uh, is something that will be a memory I remember forever. And uh, I'm very, very proud to have done it, I guess, in front of a home crowd and um, in front of my friends and family that were able to make it to Melbourne to watch me perform. Yeah, I, as I was looking through all of this, um, I was like, has he never been to short course worlds before? Um, and then your first time you go in there and it's, it's a home games and you win seven medals, three gold, three silver and a bronze. Um, how, how did you obviously aside from the hundred free title, how did you assess the meet as a whole for you? I think incredible. I think again, like I, I love individual success, but I probably love relay success almost that little bit more. I think for us. In Australia, we've had so much great relay success over the last, you know, especially 22-year period from Sydney through. Uh, and over these last years, it's been our female side of the swimming team probably carrying our relay success a lot. So for us, as the boys team to stand up and get a few gold medals and kind of uh, situate ourselves at the top of the podium and break a world record and um, was something that I will cherish forever, I think, uh, doing it with some of my absolute best mates breaking world record, uh, winning gold medals at world championships, I think was was incredible. I think that definitely trumps my my individual success for sure. I think uh, I'm a person that prides myself on lifting for relays and swimming, uh, you know, times that people don't think possible almost when it's, when it's up to me. I love the pressure. I love watching the first three guys race. I love kind of looking and seeing, you know, at times how far we are behind and how much time I have to chase and like, you know, making myself believe it you know i think there's i think it's challenging you know being the fourth swimmer uh being a second and a half behind and only having 100 meters to kind of work that and catch that up but for me i absolutely love that moment and uh i love having the pressure and expectation on me to deliver something special for the team so uh i honestly had one of the greatest greatest weeks of my life um swimming at the world short course championships and to come away with seven medals um was very special definitely better than i thought yeah i mean not only emotionally but just historically by the numbers it, you you capped it off with the fastest relay split of all time on that met uh, can you take me through that anchor do you remember anything from that swim specifically and, and you know touching first in your reaction to my jaw dropped i've never watched a race where i just involuntarily went because I couldn't believe how that race finished. Oh, it was crazy. I think um, for me, like I said to the to the media, I pride myself on no matter what, no matter what time in my career, you look at my you look at my career and my international competitions. I make sure that my medley relay on the last day is my fastest time and my fastest split of the competition. And I think it's purely because I know it's the last event of the competition every time. It's the last time we as an Australian swim team get to enter the pool. And I'm the last Australian swimmer that gets to enter the pool being the freestyle league. So for me, I take a lot of pride in that and I take a lot of responsibility, I guess, uh, to perform something amazing. But I knew that I had the 200 freestyle that day and I knew that if I swam my best, yes, I might have been a chance of getting a medal and I was swimming pretty well. And obviously my 4 by 200 freestyle was pretty good. But I knew that if I was to pull out of that event to prioritise the relay, I knew that we were a very good chance of doing something special more so because Isaac Cooper was swimming so well. 
I knew Matt Temple was a guy that lifts for the relays. He's he's one of my best mates, and uh, to swim the relay with him and be fresh um, was going to be very special. And then we have Josh Young, who's kind of coming through in the breaststroke world, and I think has a very very bright future. And for him, you know, I I I'm a person that loves swimming. I love watching the race. So I watch Isaac swim a personal best time. I watch Youngy. Um, stand up and go 0.7 faster than he did in his individual. So split a 56, which, you know, I think is so special. I think our breaststroke legs, the leg that we really need to uh, to grow in going forward into Paris, like hopefully Josh Young can get up uh, individually and be in our relay through to Paris because I think that's so special to be able to perform so amazingly and that's where we're probably lacked in the last little bit. And then for Matt Temple to go 1.4 seconds faster than he did in his under, individual 100 butterfly um, on the same night was was incredible. I think everything kind of came together. So for me, standing, watching those guys swim so well, obviously I didn't know how fast Temple had swam at that stage, but I knew that he was swimming quite fast. And then I knew that the pressure kind of came onto me and the crowd was the loudest I've ever heard of. I think having, you know, 4,500 Australians in the crowd cheering and cheering my name and my three teammates standing behind me cheering my name lifted me a lot and I think you know Isaac yelling King Kyle like the king is king yelling that in my (laughs) ear uh motivates me a whole lot and I think uh I back myself in no matter where I am in the water I dive into the pool believing I can win uh and I have to believe I can win otherwise I don't think there's any point in me diving in the pool I think uh I'm not in the I'm not in the race to just make up the numbers um I'm not in the race to to do anything but try to win and um for us to touch the wall first well equal first to be honest I had no idea what had happened because I saw first next to our name but then I saw the Americans going crazy and cheering and Kieran kind of like celebrating and then I couldn't work out whether we'd lost and there was a bit of a malfunction or what was going on but to to tie with the Americans was you know Ryan Murphy's one of my great mates to be able to stand on the top of the podium with him was was something I'll, I'll cherish forever. And um, to break a world record in the process in the medley relay is just something that I never dreamed possible. So for me, that was my my absolute highlight. And um, yeah, I think I gave gave everything to the race and found a whole nother level. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Isaac Cooper. He had a wild week, <laughs> um, you know, very up and down. Um, can you can you give me your perspective on seeing him operate this week and kind of him coming out of that, obviously as a world champion, a world record holder, um, and 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 seeing his career, yeah. seeing his career go? Yeah, Isaac's one of my very very best friends. We speak every single day. Um, we were roommates the whole time we were away through our staging camp through the competition so for me uh i've kind of seen him as this 18 year old kid or 17 when i met him at the olympics um with a whole lot of talent and if i'm able to kind of have some positive impacts on his on his career then i've I've done my my service to australian swimming because i know that he has an incredible amount of potential and an incredible future if he's able to kind of i guess uh harvest that potential and and um you know succeed but that week for him was something I've never experienced in my life I think uh him winning the bronze medal in the 100 backstroke I never thought he would do something like that you know I even spoke to him and kind of went you know I look I look at you and you're not like overly physically gifted you know I've trained with him I'm not going to say he's the worst trainer ever but he's like he's not the best trainer just yet like he trains hard but he's just like amazing mentally like he believes he's the best and so much of his positive kind of things that he has going he's able to rub off on me and I think it makes me believe and builds me up and we kind of just complement each other so much so for us I have to put my success down to to him as well like having a massive impact on me over this last week but I think you know the night of his 50 backstroke for him you know, to go in and we kind of spent the day, he couldn't nap. And it's like, oh, how are you going to celebrate tonight, Isaac, when you become the world champion? And we build it up, build it up. I sit there and watch him do it. And then, you know, the, you know, he get not just, I don't know what really happened, but I've never seen anything like that in my swimming career. And I think for me, I took all that emotion on. It was such a challenge for me. I had three races that night. Um, and that, that race, watching him, I, I much prefer... I love swimming. 
I love team success. I love being on a successful team. I love nothing more than my teammates doing well. And I ride the emotions and I ride the highs and lows with my teammates. And that was a very, very challenging emotion for me to ride into my race. And, you know, to see him just bawling his eyes out when he got his presented his silver medal and knowing that I had to go home and somehow comfort him, somehow deal with his emotions, deal with my emotions and try to reset us for the next day because I knew that we had the 4 by 50 medley that day was was a very big challenge for me, but something that I enjoyed doing because I know that I'm able to do that and I think we were both able to reset really, really well. And I think we were both able to produce our best swims on the final night of competition. And I think that's that's credit to Isaac. He's an 18-year-old kid with... um. Like I said, so much potential, but he's got such a big, good head on his on his shoulders that's going to carry him through for a very successful swimming career. So I'm very excited to be a fan watching him and watching him perform over the next few years and watching him perform in our medley relays and carry us to some more success, hopefully. You know, it was, it was so <clears throat> almost relieving to see him show that emotion on the podium because it was heartbreaking as, as a fan just watching how the events unfolded and then to have again this kid who had swum the fastest time and then he doesn't end up getting that world title and um it was it, i i don't know if it was unfair but it was rough you know it was it was heartbreaking and um it was cool seeing him express that emotion and then as as me i don't know him but i'm just like he's gonna move you know he's gonna get past this He's, you know, he's having his moment of, of grievance now and he's going to move forward. And then, you know, he finished the meet out on top uh, it was re- really, really well. And so that was it was a cool narrative to follow just as as a fan of of swimming, um, because we don't you don't normally get to see kind of those storylines unfold throughout the course of a meet. Um, <clears throat> well, I totally agree. I think, again, it shows that we we are humans first and we have emotions and things like that is is heartbreaking, obviously, like for the normally backstroke, they have the false start line that would drop down and you don't swim a whole 50. And Isaac's, Isaac is a, is a pure sprinter. So for him to back up a race again and do it again is is challenging. You know, you, you're caffeine, you emotionally get yourself ready for that race. And to swim a 22-4, break the world junior record, the Oceana record, the Australian record for that time not to count and to not get your gold medal was one of the hardest things I've definitely had to see uh, live, I think, in in my sport. Um, And something that I have no idea how he was able to, you know, break that down mentally and then still be able to stand up the next day and the next day and perform. So I think... um, yeah, for him to be able to do that, obviously we ride the highs and lows in swimming. There's there's going to be amazing times. There's going to be really low points. And he's had a few low points this year. And for him to be able to go through them early in his career, I think it's only going to be better as he moves forward. Obviously, we have to we have to experience the lows to be able to move forward and to go high. And things aren't always going to go right, unfortunately. And for him to actually realize that and realize that, hey, this is all part of the process and all part of the bigger, bigger picture, I think is um is incredible. But you know, it, it is hard like to to be crowned well, to be potentially crowned a world champion. It's something that you can't take lightly or take for granted. You know, he might never be able to achieve that again. So um it would be a very hard thing for him to process, but for him to then stand up in the relay, be a world record holder, world champions. Credit to him, credit to his family, credit to his coach, and hopefully credit to his roommate, me. <laughs> <laughs> the most credit of all, obviously. <laughs> um, I, I do want to go back to, to uh, that 100 free race of yours because you had the World Cup circuit earlier this fall. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about kind of just continuing that win streak? You know, you get wins. I think it's four, five, six, seven, or seven, six, seven, or five, six, seven, eight. You know, you you continue your win streak in the hundred free throughout all three World Cup stops, and then you back it up in Melbourne. Um, can you just talk about how you moved through the World Cup circuit, um, and then ultimately was able to put it together once again in Melbourne? I think for me now, it's it's fifteen. 15 uh, individual short course 100 freestyle wins in a row. So you look back to to ISL last year, the World Cup Series last year, back to ISL again through the finals, Shane short course uh, nationals, and then to go onto the World Cup circuit, it's now 15 wins where I've I've got up in the 100 freestyle. So 
Um, for me, that's something I'm so, so proud of. I'm proud of that I've pretty much raced every single person in the world in the 100 freestyle at this point. Uh, and being able to get my hand on the wall first across the short course uh, event. Um, and I think, you know, Melbourne for me probably wasn't about swimming a time. Like, yeah, I wanted to swim fast, but it was about winning that world short course title that I have desperately wanted for so long. And something that I feel that last year I was so close to achieving, obviously breaking a world record and swimming so well through the World Cup series and then ISL and then, my shoulder going on me and having to have shoulder surgery was something that really heartbroke me a lot and probably something I never spoke about all that much about how hard it actually was knowing that my time that I'd swum all year would have would have won that event and not being able to be there and kind of see see that happening was was very very challenging for me so for me it was almost a redemption thing and I think there was a whole lot of pressure and expectation I think uh I've never I have swam in front of a home crowd, obviously, at the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games, but to swim in front of a home crowd, I think people don't realise how hard and challenging it actually is, that all the pressures and expectations that actually come with that, like all the all the people carrying the baskets, all the lifeguards, all the employees and volunteers and uh, are all Australian and they all want photos and they all want signatures and the pressure's on you, like your family's there, my management's there, my sponsors are there watching me live, so... It's something that I haven't had to deal with for a long time. So I think I actually struggled with uh, having that almost at times. Like I found it quite overwhelming. And I think, you know, that 24 hours of heat, semi-final, <laughs> final, Thorpey kind of calling me out, saying that I wasn't the favourite for the event. Who's He's been my mentor for the last, you know, since probably 2016, Thorpey took me under my wing. But for my mentor to kind of say, hey, you know, Kyle's not the favourite for this event and he's backing Popovici in, I found challenging as well because I was like, well, you know, I've I've won 14 events of this in a row. I'm the world record holder. Like, uh, I'm, in, I'm in good form. I don't know how my, my mentor guy could come out and say that, but I took that as motivation to to prove him wrong and um, to stand up and, and perform and... Uh, to get my hand on the wall first, the time was fast, but to 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 do it is almost a big sense of relief for me. I've I've ticked that big box off in my swimming career, and it's an achievement that I'll um, am so so proud of myself for doing. And you know, I definitely couldn't have done it without my my team and my support crew around me. And there's so many people that contribute to that event. I'm very lucky to be the person that dives off the block and swims the race, but. I can't do it without my coaches and all my staff that work with me tirelessly day in, day out and sacrifice everything for my my success and my family and, you know, having my family up in the crowd, having my grandparents and my mom and my dad and my brother and these people I love, you know, with all my heart, having them there and being able to look up into the crowd and share that moment with them is just so special and something that I wish I could do more regularly. But um, I love I loved every second of it and... Um, I'm so grateful for for everyone's support and everyone coming out and watching and supporting me from afar. I'm glad you said that because before the final, I I was nervous as hell. <laughs> I was like, for you. And I was like, I don't yeah. like if he's not nervous, he is like an alien, right? It's like <laughs> I don't I don't understand how he could how he could do this. I would just completely crumble. Uh that you know, I could feel the pressure. I was in the United States and I wasn't racing, you know? Um, so thank you for shedding light on just how much uh, on the kind of pressure that comes with the, you know, the 14 wins in a row swimming on your home turf, <clears throat> going for that world world title, which you'd publicly stated, you know, it's like, I'm, I want this, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people do, but again, in swimming, people don't always necessarily make that goal exceedingly public. Um, mm -hmm. so you mentioned that, you know, you were, you were pretty heartbroken, uh, missing short course worlds last year after injury. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you, you've, you've been through quite a few injuries over your career or setbacks in your career. How do you stay motivated? Like, I feel like any one of those would just kind of knock someone out or, or take them off, off the top. But after every single one, you have worked your way back up to the very top of the podium. Yeah, I think for me, like I've had three heart surgeries. I've had both of my shoulders operated on uh, and so many other niggles and bumps along the way that 
I don't take swimming for granted anymore. I think I'm so grateful for the opportunity I get every time to represent my country or swim at the highest level. I know how much sacrifice and how much pain and heartbreak I've had to go to to get to that point again. So for me, it's it's such a special thing representing a country at the highest level. Uh, and it's something that I'm not going to get to do for all that long. So for me, you know, look, I look at world champs this year, the long course one, um, and it was like unsure whether I was going to do it because obviously I'd been back in the pool for six weeks and my shoulder was just coming back from a second surgery. And um, I kind of I kind of looked, I was, well, just like thought and spoke to a lot of people and went, you know, I missed World Champs in 2017 through my, having a heart surgery and it was one of the hardest competitions of my life having to be there watching it and knowing I couldn't be a part of that race and desperately wanting to be there. And I don't know how many world championships I've got left in me. I don't know how many more international competitions I've got left in me. My body, you know, I could have a freak injury tomorrow and never be able to race again. So for me, I don't I don't take it for granted. I race every race like it's my last, last race and I do do everything possible to to get myself in the position to race and perform. So it has been hard, but I've built myself back from, from rock bottom every single time, built myself back to the top, got myself back in good physical condition, mental condition to race and perform and, I do feel like um, by the time Paris rolls around, like I said in the media recently, that I will be will be pretty bulletproof from everything that I've had to go through, uh, you know, all the setbacks that I've had to face physically, mentally and emotionally over this last seven-year period that's shaped me and built me to the person I am today. And I do feel that there's not overly, there's not many setbacks that I could face now that I haven't had to deal with previously. And I've found strategies and ways that I'm able to do that. And I have such a good support team around me that are able to reset my mind so quickly and help me see the positives and help me see my end goal and what I want to achieve and what I want to do that um, it's very easy for me to stay motivated. I love I love my sport. I love racing at the highest level. I love inspiring the next generation as soon as, um, you know, I love, I love everything that I, I get to do and the life I get to live. So for me, it's very easy to understand that setbacks are all part of the process and that I have to fight my way back to the top and it's what I want to do and I think it builds character and it makes those victories so much sweeter it makes you know standing on top of the podium so much more special when I know that it's been taken away from me so many times and I've had to work so hard to get back to that point yeah uh, <laughs> I just congrats again on on getting back to that point um so right now uh, I think Adam Peaty's in Adelaide. <laughs> is that correct? He is. He's in my in my lounge room right now, actually. So uh, he's here for Christmas with me. We're doing a week of training together this week. So we're very, very similar minded people. I think we're very, we're wired very differently. Um, and I think we pride ourselves and love hard training and pushing ourselves to the limit. So for me, we get along very, very well. He's one of my greatest mates and uh, it's been pretty cool watching him perform in training over the last couple of days. And we've got a couple more days before we go on Christmas break and then to take him home to to my family in the country for Christmas is going to be pretty exciting. Uh, it does not surprise me to hear that you guys are mentally wired similarly uh, <laughs> because you guys are two of the, the most dominant males in our sport right now. But uh, I am curious, you know, Obviously, the obvious divide is that you swim the hundred free and he swims the hundred breast. What's training like? You know, what kind of stuff are you guys doing? Well, I think that's what complements each other and our friendship so much is that we're not competitors. I think if we were competitors, we wouldn't be friends. I know that I'm a person that gets to know my competitors and learns to love my competitors so that when I'm in the marshalling room, I got people to talk to and I love that. And I love seeing the familiar faces and having a laugh before we race. Whereas he's a person I think that learns to hate his competitors. So I'm so <laughs> glad that I'm not on the receiving end of that because uh, I much prefer Adam Petey as my best, one of my best mates. But um, I guess it works out pretty well, to be honest with you. You know, like we we aren't racing against each other as such while we're in training. We're doing a bit of race pace stuff, hitting hitting our hitting our speed that we want to hit, but to just inspire each other and motivate each other in the gym and uh, in the water. It's it's, you know, something I, I've never trained with a guy of his caliber before. I think, you know, he's a 14 time world record holder. I look at him. He's one of the greatest ever in our sport and probably will be one of the greatest 
you know, to ever do it. So to be able to share a little bit of time with him, learn from him, kind of uh, gain a little bit of knowledge, it, it motivates me and is only going to make me better, I think. So, uh, yeah, we're just working hard in the gym, putting on a bit of muscle and uh, training fast and training hard. So it's been it's been a special few days. Certainly sounds like it. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome that you guys are able to to do something like that and ha- have a little mini camp off off the tales of short course worlds um mm-hmm. kyle i always appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat and give us a, a little intake on how your mind works and what's going on in there uh any parting thoughts before we sign off uh no no parting thoughts i think you know i think we're lucky very lucky in the swimming world i've created so many amazing men uh so many amazing friends over this over this period and i think you know, we're, we're able to connect so well because we, like I said, we are wired differently and everyone in the top, top part of that swimming world is wired the same. So we're able to connect so easily and it's great to be surrounded by similar like-minded people. And I'm very grateful to have created so many friends and so many memories. And I'm very grateful for your support, very grateful for Swim Swim support, very grateful for the fans. Um, I hope I motivate, hope I inspire the next generation of swimmers to to chase their dreams and do what they love and make swimming cool and exciting. And uh, hopefully I've got some really, really good races still to come under my belt that uh, everyone can enjoy over the next few years.